What's going on, guys? It's Cody and Matt. We are back on the Broken Moto Show, uh, episode 36, I believe. Matt, it's been a long time, dude. Dude, 20 months. 20 months. That so is. Should, so we should probably tell everyone that's new here what the heck this show is all about. We should. Um, about a year ago or more, me and Matt decided, uh, since all the questions that we get sent in to us, via both of our platforms matt with how to motorcycle repair and mine with motorcycle nd that it would be cool just to make some type of content to uh, help out the riding community and answer some of those questions now we are backlogged quite a bit so what we like to do is try to spend 25 minutes something like that just on an episode of me and him talking through some questions get through as many as possible uh, of what you guys send into us Again, like I said, we're backlogged like a, a, a year and what is that? 12 plus seven. It's over a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Over a year and a half. That's crazy. So we'll be going through those questions as we kind of build this back in. We are back for this new year, which we're, we are excited about. We did take a big break. We had some a bunch of changes that we made. Matt in his new um, uh, uh, shed that he's living in right now. And then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just moving parts you know with families moving and all different types of, of situations going on but we're excited we're back we want to um get back into this obviously we're it's during a day we i think last time we did this we had the whole beer fun thing going on we may move into that later but right yeah. now it's it's just it's just i have a Lacroix. that's what i'm doing right now yeah i mean it's it's early in the morning too early for beer and stuff way like too that. early <laughs> uh, but yeah i mean i mean yeah some of those episodes man we were getting a little sauced up and we talked for a long time <laughs> but it was a good time i mean it was a good time pe man. people were mailing us beer and stuff so yeah, uh, it was, it was awesome. great it was yeah. great so matt how can they get a hold of us man yeah so um if you want to submit a question to be answered by us on this show uh go in the video description there'll be we'll mention how to get a hold of us and how to submit your question maybe you can include some pictures videos you're making model mileage would be awesome that would be awesome I, I think we'll make like a submission form that makes sure that you answer those questions and then we're trying to figure out how you guys can send us pictures directly because that's what we need but with the form submission we can't really do that so if emailing is easier just make sure you give us all the all the information that we need all right because yeah it, don't make it too difficult for us yeah but uh -huh. <sighs> Yeah, and and before we get right into it, we got a couple things to uh, talk about here. So we have a free motorcycle repair class, which is called the Wrench to Ride. Yeah, like a maintenance uh, course. Yeah. yeah, it's what is it, 30, 40 videos for free. Yeah. Directly to your inbox. Uh, that link will be in the video description as well. So that's going to help you out with uh, some basic maintenance and repair on your motorcycle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. There'll be an, uh, an account you can set up and you'll just have full access to those videos, no ties to us. So it's just, it's good information for people who are just starting out riding or you've been riding and you need a, a touch up scenario on what you should be doing to your bike pretty consistently. So yeah. it's helpful. It's helped a lot of people out. Yeah. And then um, if you want to take it a step further, we have the masterclass 140 mm -hmm. plus videos. I can't even tell you how many hours of yeah. footage that is, but it's both of us pump that have pumped content into this course and it's it's just jam-packed so if you want to uh take it a next step that that link will be in the video description as well yeah there we kind of break down a lot of topics it's a it's a very topical situation whether it's carburetors some motor stuff tune-up stuff brakes wheels tires chassis electrical all this stuff um that we uh are excited about as well it's people seem to really enjoy it yeah for sure Cool, man. Well, Matt, 2023, dude, what are you trying to do this year? Well, uh, dude, I got to buy a motorcycle. I currently have zero here in this garage. Um, I, have a, I have a couple little bikes up north for the kids, but um, I have I have no projects as far as motorcycles are concerned. I mean, I'm yeah. still, you know, I, I moved six months ago, so I just been focusing on getting the garage set up to work in. Right. And I'm, um, I think I'm there now. Yeah. Um, and it's time to find something, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you, if you guys want to catch up on all of Matt's festivities, he did move, and he's been posting about building the garage out. It's been pretty cool to see. So, what did you think you get like a newer bike, or do you think you get like an oldie again? Dude, I I don't know. Yeah, I you know I we'll talk about this later due to like a, a question on pricing uh, later on, but. I don't know, man. I go on Facebook Marketplace and I just search motorcycles for sale and I'm scrolling and I'm like, ah, none of this stuff catches my eye. And these people are asking way too much for this junk. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. Cool. TBD. Well, yeah. let's um, let's jump in, dude. Yeah, dude. You want me to get the first one? Go ahead. All right. Um, again, these questions are a year and a half old, so hopefully, uh, maybe they have their problems solved by now, but anyway, here it goes. (laughs) (laughs) Or they don't. (laughs) Yeah. All right. This one's from Brett. Uh, my brother has a CR 80, so that's a Honda CR 80. Don't know the year, um, that I rode the other day. It, he claims it follows spark plugs pretty quickly. Well, just one spark plug. And he thinks the fuel oil mix in his tank has too much oil, but I don't have any specs on that. I pulled the spark plug and it looked okay, but it was wet, like it had fuel on it. I don't know if he had run the bike that day or not, so I can't say if it was wet from the day or from previous time. When I rode it, you can hear the engine making a pinging noise, and it only and it sounded healthy while accelerating. I figured if it was probably running rich and turned down the mixture screw and turned up the throttle screw a little, it seemed better. What is the approximate mixture screw setting on these and how would I adjust the timing? I suspect the timing is behind the harmonic balancer on the left side, but wasn't sure if there was any adjustment. No one has done the top end on the bike in a while and the history of the bike is mostly unknown. Thanks, Brett. Hmm. All right, so there's a lot here. Yeah. And, you know, it, it sounds like it's it's an older bike. Yeah, and they, and they made the CR80 up till 03, but then they started it back in like early 80s. Yeah. Maybe even so, the 70s. Well, when did they go to 85? Did they go to 85? Uh, They went to 85. Let's see. CR85. Is that what you're talking about? CR85? Yeah, I mean... The motor's no different. It's an 82cc motor. It's just a right. marketing thing. Oh, we'll just bump it up to 85 and <laughs> right. uh, it's awesome. So the CR85R started in 03 and ended in eight in 07. Okay. All right. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's probably old. They don't know the history. You know, uh, let's start at the end here. He says no one's done a top end and he doesn't know the history of the bike. Um, what I would do is pull the carb, the reed cage, and I'd pull the pipe, and I would just get a flashlight and look, try to look at the piston. Yeah. Just to see what conditions in, because if there's a bunch of score marks on it and stuff, don't even. There's no point of tuning it. You need a top end job at least. Yeah, it's smart. Uh, so at least get a peek in there. Well, um, when he talks about pinging in a two stroke, what is he usually talking about? So. Well, that's a good question. I mean, some models do have the tendency to ping and you got to run higher octane, but I don't, I don't know if that's the case there. I think he might be just hearing yeah, the two stroke before it starts to get into its power band. Cause when you're just like riding it at low R's, it's like ding, 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 ding. You know, it sounds, yeah. it might be that rattling. It's hard to tell, man. Yeah, and and maybe a, a, an exhaust spring is gone or stretched out, and now the the pipes just making noise. Who knows? Yeah. Um. So, what kind of uh, premix do you usually run? Because Matt Matt's more of a he's he's I would say you are more knowledgeable in two strokes than I am. It, we I don't deal with them too often. I would like okay. to, but I just don't deal with them too often. So, what kind of pre- I know what like I what I typically suggest but what do you run and what kind of two-stroke oil do you run so i mean dude you can be this is hammered to death online yeah. right what kind of oil what kind of ratio so um my advice would be to buy oil a high quality oil that has a dirt bike on the label or yeah. at a dirt at a motorcycle shop like yamalube yeah honda hp2 there's millions of brands, but the ratio you want to run is 
determined by the manufacturer of the oil. Correct. There's oils that say 40 to one. There's oils yep. that say 50 to one. There's Motul and Motor X say 61 or whatever. Um, but if you're running Yamaloop 2R or HP2, that's a 32 to one yep. deal for the CR80. So yeah. um, don't overthink it. Get a good oil and mix it at what they say. Okay. Right. Don't, whatever you do, don't use less oil. Right. That's actually worse. People right. do that all the time. There's like, oh, there's spooge, oily stuff coming out of the muffler. I got to take out oil. And that's just the wrong approach. Correct. So anyway, um, now since you don't know, just drain that gas oil mix and start fresh. Start with a fresh batch of 93 yep. or whatever your octane is, 91, wherever you live. And then uh, mix it 32 to one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard like there's this, this one of this, these guys who uh, the shop's familiar with, he's done a lot of um, race bikes and quads and that kind of thing. The old guy, old track track racer excuse me he is a maxima fan he runs i think that, that, that that's what it's called maxima yeah that's a brand yeah he he runs that a lot um but you're totally spot on with i would go with off of the oil recommendation i think honda's hp2 full synthetic is still 32 to 1 yeah um and as far as the mixture setting goes i don't know what the appropriate by the book spec is but if it's in most of the two strokes that i've seen it's like one and a half out correct you know um so but really that's going to come down to like the tuning of your ear a lot of cases for me because i would say that i struggle with really dialing in the two stroke mix exactly because the two strokes to me they don't rev down as fast as the four strokes do like you you know wing ding, 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 ding. and like that cadence is different from a four stroke where it's more like brah brah and yeah. it can fall more subtle when you are adjusting it the two strokes to me i because of the, of the long decay that's kind of natural with them because there's not a lot of weight you know with the crank and the flywheel and all that stuff it kind of takes a little bit for it to slow down for me at least so tuning it so i would just go off of the standard setting, which would I, like, I, like I just said, which I find most of them to be at about one and a half out. Yeah. So how I generally approach that is one and a half out is your stock setting, right? Yeah. Assuming it's a stock pilot jet, chances are it's going to be too rich. I mean, two stroke bikes are shipped to you rich because they don't want you to blow it up. Ah. Okay. So, I mean, leaning it out a little bit is always a good thing. Right. I mean, or jetting it properly. So what I do is like, you don't get much of a, a noticeable idle drop or increase when you're tuning it. Yeah. Just sitting there at idle. So what I do is I ride it, right? Just, just slow roll, whack the throttle and see how it accelerates. Then, you know, if it, if it kind of, um, uh, and then go to, well, then you got to make a change. So go to like two turns out. And if it improves, you it wants to be leaner. So then maybe go to two and a half and then three. And I, I'm some bikes are so rich. Like my KX 250, I was able to wing that thing out to three turns, wow. which is stupid. And it would still, it wouldn't bog. Yeah. So that came with like a 52 pilot. I put in a 50, same test. It was still rich. I went to 48. Uh, 48 was really good at about one and a quarter out. Yeah. One and a half out. I went to 45 and then I got a nasty bog. So I know I went too far. Gotcha. So you really want to focus on how the thing accelerates versus the idle. Cause the idle, you'll never really be able to tell as, as well. So ultimately what you're looking for when you're doing, when you like, like how you're describing it and you give it some throttle, uh, mind you, you guys are on two strokes. So make sure that you're not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> don't wind it on yourself you know but um so what you're ultimately looking for is for it not to bog when you crack the throttle or when you were you know hit when you hit yeah. the throttle a little bit what on the would you say that it can bog in both lean and rich conditions so o when it, overly lean overly rich yeah when it when it's really rich it's send it's it's 
tends to sound very dull and just like you know like okay. like a really deep tone yeah um that's generally what happens okay um but on a, on a lean mixer it's usually just like a sh- it'll it'll bog and fall on its face no acceleration uh, at least with yeah, the rich with the richness it'll accelerate it'll go but it'll be lazy gotcha. and that but when it's lean it will like boo and it'll just it, also know, like, yeah and then yeah. you're gonna go flying into the handlebars type of right. deal you know it right. like totally shuts down Dude, that's great information man that's that honestly helps me out because like i've like i said i i continue i've dealt with both of those situations and i just try to ride it you know and get that good parameter and if i rip the throttle when the front wheel comes up and i know that something's at least right you yes know? yeah exactly don't make the mistake of like and then chopping it yeah and then coming on it again and you'll you're gonna preload <laughs> you're gonna preload that front end and you're just gonna come right back up and it's gonna loop you out dude oh, and man. if it loops you out then i think you're good you know then, <laughs> then, then, then she's tuned you know? and go ahead and buy some new handlebars yeah. and probably a rear fender <laughs> yep. fender elite yeah dude, scary bike dude that i've ridden recently cr250r man those bikes are fun to ride but I'm like a little bit terrified of them, especially on the street. Yeah. I, like I I don't have as much experience riding two strokes to be like, I can control this bike, you know? Cause like, I feel like I can't control the bike. <laughs> yeah. No, a 250 is a, a lot of bike, dude. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's the same way that I feel with like kids buying CR450 or CRF 450Rs. It's like, if you don't have like 10 years of saddle time, on a CR 450 or riding dirt bikes in general to just want to buy a dirt bike that's fast and buy a CR two CRF 250R is not smart. No, like yeah, those bikes be... are insane. And yeah. Yeah. It, they're, they're fast, dude. They're so. fast, man. And they're, yeah. they're, they're for the track. Like it's, yeah. but it's the same thing when it comes to like buying a 1000 CC yeah. bike, you know, it's like, you really need to put this thing somewhere else. Not, yeah, yeah, start small, City. right? <laughs> um, what else does he have here? Uh, timing. Um, as far as ignition timing, yes, there are usually sometimes there's a little bit of adjustment on the left side. It's it's not the harmonic balancer. It's the it's you call it the flywheel, and behind it is the stator plate. Yeah, and that might have a couple degrees one way or another. Um, sometimes they're just installed straight up. Right, and sometimes there might be a, a tick mark for retarded or advanced um three degrees one way or another that's all you get Um, yeah i I was looking at the part schematic and it looks like it has a single pulser that's going off of the flywheel but it doesn't say nor do i have a manual to see if it's slotted or not yeah 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 but generally speaking those can't be out of time yeah the, the the if there is an adjustment it's so small that it's not gonna really affect right um and I played with the timing on my KX250. I retarded the timing to soften the hit. Okay. And because, dude, that bike, I was on a track that had, uh, it was hard to get traction. Right. So I was trying to soften the hit. I put a flywheel weight on it um, to try to gain traction. Um, so I messed with it a little bit. If you advance the timing, it'll be more peppier in the low to mid range, but it won't rev out as much. Right. And and vice versa with retarded um, on a two stroke. So um, very, very little to do with necessarily it. I don't think it would be substantial enough to cause it to ping, in other words. Yeah. Right. Like there's not that much room for error like there would be on like a point system. Now there are two strokes with point systems, but this is a bike that does not have points. So. Yeah. And then, um, as far as the plug coming out wet, I mean, um, I, you know, you, you gotta, another thing is you gotta take apart the carburetor and see what pilot jets in it, what needle is stamped clip position in the main. Cause you don't know what people have done. Right. So you want to verify that and start at stock and then go from there. Yeah. Um, and then also make sure the plug is correct, correct heat range and all that. And then, yeah. And then go from there. You got to start at square one because you you don't know the history of the bike. 
Yeah, I, I would say that plug heat range is more vital with two strokes than it is for four strokes. Yeah, so this is going to be a B10 in this bike. Yeah. Um, and so forth. So um, if it's still coming out wet, you know, it's time to jet down um, and so forth. But that's that's uh, for another day. I guess let them get back to us two years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was his name? We don't have a name. Brett. Brett. His name's Brett. Brett, thanks for uh, – emailing us in man i hope that you were really looking forward to this reply for the past year and eight months <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on to the next awesome one, dude awesome yeah, thanks Brad. all right uh this one says pics included in email do we have those pictures still uh yes all right sweet so yeah. we'll, we'll we'll put them up here uh damn guys I know you keep asking for pictures when I send in questions and I thought I did get pictures attached to this email, but you know, I rode a 1978 Honda. So, you know, I'm an old fart and technology isn't my forte. I guess the files were too big or something. So I'll try again. Thanks for the range. I think this was a email that was sent to like, this was a reply, a re-reply to an email that we had talked about with bike pricing. I think yeah. he was, I think he was looking to sell his bike and he wanted to know, where he should start. Uh, thanks for the range that you think I can get for the bike. I'm sure I'm not at the $4,000 end of the scale, but I didn't think that 1500 is the low end. So that was helpful. Also the information you gave me about shipping, I think we helped him out with, I forgot the company name, but if you were looking to get bikes shipped to you or ship a bike out, um, there are people who that's all they do is just pick up your bike in a trailer and then and then they'll bring your bike to wherever you need and they'll charge you accordingly. It's pretty nice. They have, it's almost like a Google rating system too. They, people put reviews about how the bike showed up and, you know, whatever, how nice they were. They show up, you know, drunk or whatever, you know? So it yeah. was, I, I, I can't remember what the company was it you haul it or something like, no, it, you uh, haul is an there's, actual thing. Uh, you ship. You ship. That That's is, what it was. it's like a, you post your what you want on this yep. board and then you get multiple carriers to bid on it yep use them yeah. in the past and i've had customers use them uh yeah so yeah really cool company um uh thank you Cody, for taking the time to look up the name of the company and the suggestion from matt about facebook marketplace uh, was helpful as well. Last week when I checked to see if you guys answered my question, I saw that the title was, what is my bike worth? And I said, yes, they answered me. That was so cool. Anyway, I am going to try to attach pictures again, keep up the good work and some beer money is on the way back when we were taking beer money. Good days, good days. But um, one thing you asked, and that was where I lived because that could affect value. I live in Connecticut. Thank you, Al. So, Al, thanks for replying back to us uh, so long ago. We appreciate it. But this does bring up a topic on bike value in 2023. You know, what people are asking, what bikes are going for. Matt, you said that you've been looking at bikes recently or whenever. Yeah. So, okay. During COVID, things were getting out of control, man. Yeah. Like the demand for hobby stuff, anything hobby related was just increased dramatically like right all kind because of covid right yep. um motorcycles dude a thousand dollar dirt bike all of a sudden is now two three thousand dollar dirt bike that people are trying to sell for yeah um whether it was actually selling for her that much i don't know but that's what like people were pricing them at yeah. um i sold my kx 250 during that time because i didn't use it much i needed a new bike to make new content yeah. Um, and I was working on my car. Then I moved. So I mean, I, I needed to get rid of it. But I'm looking. <laughs> but now I'm looking for a project, and everything is just, I feel, a little Over expensive. Price. Yeah. And and you know, it, it the prices went up <laughs> real quick, but I don't think they're going to come down that fast. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take yeah. a while for the market to kind of stabilize again. I think. What are I your thoughts right. on that? I mean, I, I, I would agree with you. Like I saw, like, <clears throat> it also depends on the bike, you know, but like, I've been looking at a lot of XRs lately 
Um, I want to get my girl an XR uh, 70 because she really likes to, and she just likes dicking around on it. Yeah. You know, and the clutch thing, she's getting the hang of it, but I think it would take less stress off of her if she just had something she could just shift in and go. Right. And do this. The, the seven, the fifties, the seventies, and the eighties are all the same price. It's like everyone wants twelve to fifteen hundred, maybe even eighteen hundred dollars for them. And yeah. I'm like, dude, this is a seven hundred dollar bike. Like, what? an old, an old XR eighty is a seven hundred dollar bike. I, I don't care what you tell me, uh, unless it has never been ridden. You, you know what I mean? Which is not yeah. the case because these are bikes are not being made anymore. They're making the CRF, you know, which is right. a, pretty much the same thing, but. So they're expensive. What what I always try to do on like marketplace, Facebook marketplace, I look at their price and I take five hundred dollars off immediately. <laughs> that, because that's funny. what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna offer. It's funny because I got an XR70, a 99, yeah. and nice. I bought it for 700 bucks. Nice. Uh pre-COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah, say, I agree. Same, same bike now is twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. Yep. No matter where you look, and it's like why? Yeah. I mean, you know? and I I have a buddy who um, has a couple of bike or a bunch of bikes in Ohio, and he's he's trying to unload some of them. And the price has not really changed. It's if anything, it's it's gone up at least three to four hundred dollars. What what people are asking. Um, but like I said, that's what I try to do is I, I I take the bike for what it's worth, not seeing it, and I just immediately subtract five hundred because. I think people know they're not going to get exactly what they're asking for in most cases. So they yeah. bump the price up to allow for that to go down. But even then, I mean, you're going to spend the money, but as far as like new model stuff goes, like from Honda, the pricing, I would say it's only gone up two to $300 on their bikes. It's like, you can get a brand new 2020 bike for seven, eight. Or 2023 yeah. bike for, I don't know why I said 2020, 2023 bike for seven, eight on some models. And so they, they've done a good job of not like inflating it to now it's $3,000 over what it was last year. So yeah, that's kind of yeah. where I'm at with and, that. Yeah. Yeah. To, and so I, I really want to buy like a KX 65 mm. for my boys. It'd be too much bike for them, but I want them to learn clutch. And plus I like two strokes and, and yeah, whatever it's, it, why not? Right. Yeah. Um, dude, I think they're asking, uh, like around 1500. Yeah. Roughly is average <laughs> price for a 20 year old <laughs> little right. dirt bike. But the thing is they're, they've been on marketplace. It's been posted for two months straight. So they're not moving. Yeah but they don't want to lower their price. So that's right. kind of where it's at. So I've been, I, I see the same bike on there, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I mean, before I think things were getting scooped up real quick. Right. Um, but man, I, I think that those days are over. Yeah. And I mean, plus the way the, the economy plays and everything, I don't know how many people are still trying to spend money on collecting. I mean, the, what was the, uh, the MX, mx 75 or the mx honda had one and it's not an mt it, is it no they, they they have a small two-stroke as well but that thing is highly sought like that's like a four thousand dollar bike and it's insane it's like a 60 or a 70 okay and i mean i i, I yeah so are do you feel like kx you said the kx 65 yeah well just to give you an example i mean just because i've been looking at that are those like highly sought after? No. Um, no. Well, I, I don't know. It's yeah. been made for a long time, a, a KX60 and KX65. Okay. Is Kawasaki um, still making two strokes? They make the um, 65, the 85, and I think they make the 100, um, I think. All I'm in sure. two strokes? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think so. Well, I, you know what? I take that back. No, wait. I was looking. I think there was like a 2022 uh, KX65 for like three grand. Wow. That someone was selling. So yeah, that they're okay. There's some they don't make the 125s and the 250s. I know that. That's right. That's all over with. But um, yeah, I think they still make them. They're still sneaking them in there. Yeah. 
Well, cool, man. You want to move on to the next question? Yeah, dude. All right. This, uh, this one's mine, right? Yes. All right. Picks included. Um, don't have the guy's name. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope all is well with you guys. So I've watched the show a couple times and I feel this would be a good time to write you guys for some knowledge. So I have an 87 Suzuki Intruder 1400 and I've been rebuilding my brake system. My front brakes, I put new pads, new brake line and rebuilt the master cylinder. After I did all that, I put new brake fluid in, blood the brakes, opened the top to let the air bubbles out of the system and nothing. I can't get the brakes to pump up at all. I did a pressure test on the master cylinder by putting my hand over it and pumping the lever and then taking my hand off to see if any fluid would come out. Nothing. I'm kind of at a loss as to what would be going on. And I've taken countless hours to work on this and figure it all out. And I'm reaching out for help. I've attached pictures to show what I'm working with. I've attached a video, but for some reason I'm saying the video file was too big to send. Not sure how everyone else sends their videos, but it wouldn't let me send mine. So hopefully my description of what is going on is enough. All right, so a, a lot of times when you completely disassemble the brake system and it's considered dry, it's hard to to bleed them. Um, yeah. I, I go to vacuum bleed or power vacuum bleed or whatever, and usually that helps. Right. Assuming everything is put together correctly here. Right. Um, <clears throat> he mentioned that he tried to like bench test uh, the master cylinder by putting his finger over it. Um, it was or his not, hand. I, yeah, I was covering the master cylinder and pumping it. Oh uh, yeah. Well, which I don't it, see how that would help. Yeah, I mean, if you put your finger over the outlet and pump it up, you should get some uh, okay. feedback. Maybe that's yeah. what he was trying to do. I'm not yeah, sure. Maybe. Um, but man, when this ha I've had this happen to me, and if it yeah. happens, I bust out the vacuum bleeder, or I got a a, a vacuum a powered vacuum bleeder that I hook up to my compressor. So I just like, you yep. know, dude, that thing's awesome. So I run some fluid that way and it usually works. Yeah. That the, the mighty vac or the vacuum bleeder is definitely the way to go. If you don't have one, there's two options that you can do. Cause people run into this all the time when they do uh, hydraulic clutch stuff too. Cause yeah, for whatever reason, air, once that system is bled out like that, air is like trapped in there and it's just like, it just does this back and forth thing with air and just won't let allow anything in. It's even worse with the clutches. Yeah, it's way worse. I, yeah. that, that's like a huge question that I get all, all the time. So the clutch thing is a little bit different. We're, we're, we're going to talk about brakes. The, what I've done in the past, so there, there's one way that is, I would say, frowned upon um, because you, typically you never want to in most cases, pinch, bend, or put the brake lines in at some type of extreme way because there's different linings of really healthy brake lines, a little bit different. Um, and there's ways you can do, do what I'm about to say carefully. So what I've done in the past is take a pair of needle nose pliers, or if you have uh, hose clamps, I wouldn't use vice grips or anything like that. Something that's kind of soft or rounded when you go to apply pressure on the line and you can apply a little bit of hand pressure. You're not trying to cut the brake line in half. You're not trying to see how big of an imprint you can make on it. You're just slightly compressing the brake line and then you're pumping through that or you're building up pressure in the lever. So I would do it right after the master cylinder, maybe six inches down um, and just put a little bit of pressure on it with some, with some pliers and I would pump it and I would hold it and I would release the, the pliers and then reattach and do that same thing about two or three times. What you're doing is you're making like this one way valve in a very short range and your hand is the one way valve, right? That's a, applying the pressure. But when you're dealing with old brake lines, when you're dealing with brake lines in general, typically uh, doing that is frowned upon because if the brake line is failing, then you're not helping it any by crimping on it. The second thing you can do is you can take like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like the reverse snap ring pliers that are kind of like a duck bill, but they're reversed. So when you, when you open, when you close them, they open, right. And on the outside of the mouth. So let's say this is the top of the uh, snap ring plier on this side. And this side is um, like not corrugated, but it's neural, neural, 
neural. There you go. And when you open them, you can you can actually grip onto the inside of a caliper piston with them. That's how I used to clean. That's how I show in all the videos that I have. And you can put that piston all the way in, right? Put fill your brake line or fill your fluid up, pump, try to get as much air out as you can. And then just take that with the bleeder closed, take the piston and slowly pull it. And what that's going to do is it puts vacuum on the line and it, it has to suck pressure from somewhere as you're pulling that piston out. You're not going to pull all the way out, but you're going to pull it somewhat out, open the bleed valve, push it back in again. And you can actually just work that two or three times and you should start to see the brake level of the fluid leave and it will slowly get sucked down into the system. I've done that before too. That's the safest way to do it. If you don't have a mighty vac, mighty vac, it's boom, it's done, you know, but yeah. So yeah. So we got two minutes left. <laughs> yeah. Everything speaking of everything getting more expensive. Uh, <laughs> we do this on zoom and now they want money Yep. after 40 minutes. Yeah. So okay. I think we answered the question as well though, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we want to do well, we don't have enough time. So yeah, we'll, we have enough time, we'll, just, dude. we'll just close it out and then start a new episode and uh that'll be it. Yeah, so we'll try to do this once a month, guys. So if you want to send in your questions to us, send them in. Even though I know it's weird it being a month later when you might hear a response, we think it's helpful in case you haven't fixed it or someone else deals with the problem itself. If um, In the meantime, you can check out Matt's website, howtomotorcyclerepair.com. He shows a lot of awesome stuff when it comes to your shop, motorcycle repair. He's got tons of great content on uh, building out um, spray boxes and blast cabinets and nozzles. The dude's, the dude, I don't know if you guys knew this, but Matt is the inventor of Velcro. Okay, so he's got tons of awesome stuff. He's Velcro a brilliant mind. <laughs> no, or you can check out my website, uh, themotorcyclemd.com tons of courses on carb cleans and again don't forget to check out the free course that we have for you guys in the description the wrench to ride right. course get you guys up and going when it comes to your motorcycle and uh getting prepared for the springtime so that's until right. next time we'll see you guys in the next episode yep that's right right all right all right later guys see ya.